Hey everyone, Eric here. And today we're going to do a little data experiment to find out not just if SketchUp 2024 runs faster than 2023, but if so, by how much. So we're going to do this little experiment that I'm going to call the benchmark test because that's something that came from a forum post. So if I kind of pull this up here, there was this forum thread a while back in 2022, sorry, in 2020, where they were like, hey, let's let's run this script together and then find out how, what, what does it show you as far as what is SketchUp returning in terms of frames per second. So that's sort of what I mean by benchmark. We're gonna see is how much faster SketchUp 2024 displays information, so refreshes information via frame rate um, on your screen. So let's just go ahead and get to it. So I'll put this away. I'm actually gonna put a link to this in the description. So if, if you wanna try this yourself, um, you can after seeing how I do it, you can download the SketchUp file and it gives you, we're gonna do this together. It's gonna to give you instructions on how you can run your own sort of benchmark test and see how fast SketchUp is operating for you. So once you've downloaded that file, I've got it up here. Now again, don't shoot the messenger. I didn't model this. Maybe it's from 3D Warehouse. Maybe it came from the author of the benchmark test. But the point is, is that this file has shadows and it has transparency. You can't see it. There's some vegetation in here. So just some things that you might see profiles are turned on some stuff that you might see, you know, in a typical um, model that you're working on. And of course, that's sort of what we're using as the benchmark. So here are some instructions that come with the file. It says open window Ruby console. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I am starting in 2024, by the way, but if you think it'd be more fun to start do this in 2023, in fact, I'm asking myself here because I'm the only one in the room. So I think it's probably better that we start this in 2023 because what we want to do is work our way up, not down. So let's see what 2023 does in this benchmark test. I'm going to close this file. I just want to make sure that I'm kind of wiping it out, that I'm starting fresh. So I'm going to go file, open recent, and then there's that test time display file. It's going to say it's locked. It's only because that I have it open in 2024 as well. Uh, that's okay. I don't think that affects anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the instructions now. We're going to go window, Ruby console, and we're going to type this in as a little snippet of Ruby code. So extension, developer, Ruby console, and we're just going to type this in. We're going to say test.time and then underscore display. If I type that in correctly, and when I'm ready, I hit enter or return to run the test. Now, that's this basically gives us our results and it ran 72 frames took 2.4 seconds which means that it's 29.5 frames per second now you might think 29.5 frames per second that's pretty good right that's kind of what you see when you're watching a film and i would say that's fine here i am working on the model i don't see any issues um i've got my shadows and profiles and all that stuff turned on there's nothing stopping me from working in version 2023 with 29 or at 29 frames per second it's perfectly uh, reasonable but what I do want to do is just compare not just what 2023 can do, but I want to show you a new boost that uh, is part of 2024 and then talk a little bit about why 2024 works differently the way that it does. So let's switch. I'm going to switch over here. They look the same, but this is 2024. And what I want to do is I'm just going to close this file. I just want to make sure that I'm starting with a fresh file that I didn't do anything to it. So I'm going to open recent. I'm going to open that exact same file. And there it is, and I'm gonna maximize it. Again, I wanna make things that make sure all things being equal. And then what I wanna do is before I run this, I want to come up here into settings. Cause I wanna talk about, well, what makes the two of them different? And you may already know this, you may have seen this in our sort of what's new in 2024 video, but if you come down to graphics, you can see that there's this new section under SketchUp, uh, this is um, preferences. So I'm in the system settings or preferences. And then under graphics, there's this thing called use new graphics engine. So the new graphics engine is unique to 2024, and it's kind of a rewrite of how SketchUp works under the hood. I don't know that much information about it, uh, to be honest. You know, I, I model, but I'm not the developer. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just going to say, yes, I want to use the new graphics engine. Um, and again, if it's giving you any problems, if you have a different setup than, than me, you can always switch back to the classic graphics engine at any time. Uh, I'm going to stick with the new one. So that said, that's the difference between 2023 and 2024. Let's go ahead and run that same thing, the same little benchmark test. I'm going to go extensions, developer, Ruby console, 
and then I'm going to type in that same thing time dot test underscore display and then a little nervous here because I hope it works you know the way that I hope that I think it's going to I'm going to hit enter or return and I don't even need to look at the data I think if you saw that first one you could see that it spun around quite a bit faster. Now I've got multiple files open and things like that. I'm, I'm obviously screen recording, so I'm using quite a bit of my processor. And you can see the result here at 144 frames per second. Now I also have my calculator here. So if we did some math, I could type in 144 divided by 29 and see that that's a five times boost or five times more performant than 2023. And that's just my particular computer. Of course, your numbers are going to vary based off of your display that you're using, your display resolution, the model that you're working on, and of course, the hardware under the hood specs of your particular machine. So I'm actually working on a machine. Um, it's an iMac Pro from 2027, 2017, excuse me. And uh, so it's not even a new machine. 2020, 2017, that's a few years old, and it seems to be doing okay. What I do is, is before I wrap this up, um, I want to take it one step further. So when I say I'm working on old machine and 2024 is working much better for me, I want to kind of give a little bit of an example of what I mean of uh, beyond this little test file that's used just to run uh, this display refresh rate or frames per second benchmark. So if I come over here, I think I've got a file in here that I'm working on. So here's my file. This is a little sneak preview of an upcam upcoming marketing campaign that we're working on. So I won't say too much about this right now, but I will say if you come up here into window and model info, and we're just gonna check statistics just to kind of see how big this model is so far. I'm still working on it, so it might get bigger. And it's a little over 4 million polygons, which kind of makes sense because the way that I used to model I used to think uh, that million polygon mark is where I kind of try to keep things if I can um, until over that you might have to think about using tags or using tag visibility or you know what I mean, switching to things like using textures. But for here, I was like, you know, we're using 2024. Let's push the envelope a little bit. I'll give you an example. If I go and turn my black and white and I turn my hidden geometry, you'll notice that these vines that are climbing up the walls, um, on this building, they are full geometry. Uh, each each leaf is uh, its own little component. And each flower is made up of a series of petals and the vines themselves are made up of full geometry. So not textures or anything like that. Same thing for everything that's coming out of the planter boxes. And if you go inside to the coffee shop itself, you can see I've got various sort of medium to high poly assets to help fill out the entourage. And then, um, so you can see if I'm moving around here, sort of zooming, even if I wanted to move her and place her, the refresh rate is really quick and snappy. And of course, the bigger the model to get, you might sort of start to see a little bit of that pushback. But for me, I'm not seeing it. And I think that tracks because if you think about the fact that I used to kind of use a million polygons as like my own threshold of keeping things, you know, around, well, if this is five times more performant and I'm running now a nearly five million polygon model, and I'm still having I'm still having no trouble at all with hidden geometries, and I even have AO turned on that I wouldn't have in 2023. So I think with all things considered, I'm definitely seeing and feeling the snappiness and the advantage of the new graphics engine. Of course, if I was to disable that, I might see a slight difference, but why would I do that? I like the new graphics engine, I'm gonna keep using it. So I'm going to stop there because this is, um, if you've seen the what's new in 2024 video, we've covered AO, we've covered the new graphics engine, but the big thing here is just putting some numbers behind it. So looking at that difference between 29 frames per second and 144. Now I ran this test a couple different times. I got all the way up to 168. So again, depending on what I'm doing in the background at the time, it might, those numbers might change. So I would kind of encourage you to check that out yourself. Maybe there's some things you want to do to play with. See if you can get those numbers up. If you're like running a bunch of applications in the background or you're using a different monitor or something like that. But it's just kind of something that for me, it's nice to know. It's not something that I'm guessing. Is it feeling faster? Is it going to stay faster as I continue to build my model and get more and more and more detailed? Of course, it's going to stay. It's going to hang. It's going to hang with you. And it's going to say, you want to keep going? You want to go big? Uh, you don't have to go home. You can go big and you can stay here 
right in SketchUp and keep working on your awesome model. So with that, I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to say, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you, if I got something wrong, if you've tried it and you're getting a different result, I would love to see what your benchmark is. Again, that link to this file is going to be in the description. Run it yourself and let me know. So don't forget to give us that thumbs up if you learned something new. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe so you get all this stuff in your inbox as they come out, as they're released. And as always, uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.